Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. Choose to live. Carry a phaser set to stun. Stamets watches a bunch of Vulcans meditate. Book gets a mind meld. Saru gets Tilly to push her boundaries. Tilly disses mac and cheese. Adira can't wait for Gray's hot new synth body. And Burnham fixes an alien alarm clock. So seriously, my number one went to a Klingon planet and did the death yell for a friend that he had met there. But that's that's going to really mess his voice up because he won. Wow. I didn't think Patrick could give that scream and out screaming Klingon. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you. I, I hope he feels better. Oh, wait, the lights on. Thanks, Doc. Okay, um, welcome aboard, everyone. We're here with another uh, exciting, sometimes confusing, but interesting episode of Starfleet Underground. <laughs> Are you confused, sir? <laughs> I think so, sometimes. Um, if you don't know who I am, well, sorry. <laughs> You're not the only one. Yeah, I, I shouldn't even tell you who I am because unless you... Well, do you, you know? Could, do you know who you're going <laughs> to? Do you like the things that like... Damn it, I shouldn't have had that coffee from Heather. Okay, um, my name is Captain Nathan Adams. I'm here on board with our wonderful crew. We have our science officer. Don't let her make coffee. Hi, I'm Heather Ferris. I'm the science officer, although this time I am reporting from the mess hall. I'm sitting here waiting to see Patrick's thrush metal band. I want to see him scream, so I'm sitting here waiting. I don't know if he can scream after that that Klingon funeral thing that he did to announce that a warrior was coming to Stovacor. Well, the dots have been running around here just like talking about him nonstop, so I had to see this. Oh, well, maybe. He's sort of going viral on the ship. <laughs> nice. I'm going to have to record it. Which, <laughs> which is going a- viral? Yeah. <laughs> Not in that way. I didn't mean it like that. Oh my oh. gosh. Sorry. Oh jeez. That's geez. pretty funny. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, um let's go ahead and segue number 1. Can you talk? Yeah, this is Patrick. I'm number 1. Um I'm the computer guy and the foreign species liaison. And apparently you're good at the Klingon screams. I mean, well, dude, you know. Did you know Terrence never beat a Klingon in the funeral scream and they heard you did? Hey, back in the 80s, I won an Elvira screaming contest at Not Scary Farm, so I'm a screamer. You heard that, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> if you're on board the ship, that's, that's got to be in his Twitter screamer. profile, right? Yeah, which, which reminds me. Um, <laughs> Doc, could you put in a work order to make sure Patrick's room is soundproofed? <laughs> Thank you. And we also have the guy who really makes us go. We have our chief. <laughs> I, I have nothing to say. I, I just, <laughs> I'm just bad over here. Hi, everybody. I'm Rocky. I'm the engineer of the show and the ship. And uh, yeah, doing good. Just want to let everybody know this show is being brought to you by Section 31, as well as our Patreon users. And if you're a kid and you happen to listen to the first couple of minutes of this, you get lucky. All right. But now's the time for you to have to leave. One day when you're old enough, you'll be able to listen to us. Until then, go, because we just found out how to mail Chucky the doll to anybody who listens that's not supposed to. So if you know what child's play is, you better make sure you stop listening now. Are they old enough to see that movie? (laughs) They they, they probably watch it anyway. If not, they're going to see. If if the children become Patreon users or or Patreons of us, can that be allowed? Mm. You know, you have to get legal department on that one. That's interesting. I wonder. We could probably try to do that. (laughs) We, I we don't think s- you're supposed to coerce a, a child to listen to our show, though. Oh, yeah, right. But if they yeah. want to pay for it, I, I, I've got no complaints. I mean, I don't know if it's legal, but I'm oh, not, I know. I'll turn my head. You know, pay for the show <laughs> and gift it to your parents. There, there we go. go. <laughs> I don't think they can do that either, sir. Really? I think that's a no-no. <laughs> oh, dang it. I, I could have. Okay. Well, never mind. So <laughs> we'll, we'll go ahead on that. And what the hell happened to my terminal? Dot, what are you doing? No, I don't want the new Hyvetica font. Stop it. 
put it back to the. I want the original font on the. I don't care if it looks better. No, stop it! Wow, that's、God. a lot of font to support from the from a dot. He just turned around and changed it. Now it's in Comic Sans, and I don't、oh, know what、no! the hell I'm reading. Oh no, not Comic Sans! Oh no, that's the worst. Dot, put it, put it, put it back, Dot. At least it's not wing bats. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's that's just un, that's just that would be mean. That would be almost as bad as making it Klingon. <laughs> okay, I think the translator I, takes a while for that one. What the hell did you do? <laughs> oh my goodness! Doc. Okay, all right. Okay, well, first off, we got any corrections? Let me check subspace here.、Uh, nope, it looks like everything went smoothly. We were、Come、flawless. <laughs> <laughs> Friggin' dot! I cannot read Vulcan. <laughs> What kind of captain are you? You can't read any other language. You, you, you gotta learn at least a little bit of Vulcan to be able to、I、visit Vulcans, right? Vulcan? I just I, I don't. What were you looking oh, at? Oh my god! It was on the console. I was looking over for the notes for the day, and the dot keeps changing. Oh great! Now he just changed everything to say choose to live. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> That's、uh, Quat Malat, I believe. Oh. Is the dot asking for a raise again?、Uh, it's probably. Does、is. the dot have a sword? I, I, I just, I'm not going to even look at the console anymore because apparently <laughs> 007 has lost his mind. If the if the dot's asking you to choose to live, I would I would get that dot out of your room pretty quickly. <laughs> I, 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 I would think so. <laughs> really. <laughs> I would think so. So、um, we're going to go ahead and jump into the news of the week.、Um, Heather, do you have time to stop making coffee to give us any news you have? Hi, Captain. So this week's news is—I don't know if you guys know this, but this is the hundredth podcast that we have done. We are at number one hundred. Oh, that's that's official. That's, that's official. official. Our, since we started numbering, it's a hundred. Yep, we're officially at a hundred. We've done a hundred podcasts, and we are almost at three years into this project. January first, we will be three years into this project. Wow, that's、yeah. friggin' amazing! I can't believe what we did a hundred. It doesn't feel like a hundred with you guys. Oh no, I look forward to this every well, week. Well, it、this、hasn't been just... with me, so <laughs> that's because <laughs> you're, you're new. But you know what? We've done you a hundred times, so that gets that equals out. Oh, Ooh, Captain, you did. Not me. No, don't, don't say we, it. sir. <laughs> no, no. I, okay, I cannot talk in the royal we, so、uh-huh. I'll take that back. <laughs> it's really cool, though. Though I heard that some people say that it's a miracle if your podcast makes it past ten episodes. Seriously, so to hit a hundred is like wow. That's that's cool. That's momentous. Very cool. We really need to thank the engineer of this show because Rocky puts in a lot of work. Getting this、It、episode、does. out, and、uh, Rocky, you just do an amazing job with the sound effects. I just, it, I really look forward to like doing the podcast, but I also look forward to like、mm-hmm. listening to the podcast too, because <laughs> so do you do、I. such a great job. Oh, thank it, you. It's You're making、amazing. my triple happy too. <laughs> it's amazing that he can do、That's、all those jobs.、Said. When he sits there in his console with his pants off, and he rolls over his member、oh. and he screams, <laughs> but yet he still takes care of it. I think it's friggin' awesome. So <sighs> it's good. How about you, number one? What do you got? So December seventeenth at eight o'clock seven central, Nickelodeon's going to air the first episode of Star Trek: Prodigy. The two episodes that we watched, Lost and Found, it's going to be as one episode, so they'll get to see it on Nickelodeon. Outstanding, Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. <laughs> Nickelodeon. That's really cool because、uh, yeah, I, it is. That's the one thing about the Star Trek right now. I mean, I'm loving all the Star Trek, and I'm definitely a proud paying member of Paramount Plus. But I feel for the rest of the country that didn't jump on that bandwagon like I did, especially if they're still Star Trek fans or if they're potential Star Trek fans, because we got to be able to get them to watch the show too. Just because bring it into everybody. So so getting it out to Nickelodeon、uh, to the cable. Cable payers, at least people that can get Nickelodeon cable, satellite, whatever, good for them. Totally. Yep. And you're all speechless. Wow. <laughs> That's because it, it, it's really it's awesome. That's why we're sitting here just basking in that information in the news. I think it's it's fabulous. Yep. And they don't have to worry about censoring it, right? Because that's the kids' show,、nope. hmm. quote nope. unquote. <laughs> well, and then if you listen to our review, well, well, that's a whole other story. That we're not、yeah. we're not for kids. 
No, we're not freaky. Are we? No. No, don't listen. See, that makes it awesomer. And how about you, Chief? What do you got? I was looking at a beautiful picture of some starships. And I'm like, wait, what's that about? Because I like some starship pictures. It's actually models. They've got some more classic models coming from Hero Collector. They're expanding their subscription service for fans that are collecting the starships. To uh, they, They've got the Universe Collection joining the Starfleet Starships Collection. So if you're a member of this, you're going to get really, really cool starships coming at you. This is kind of cool. And, uh, and if you're not a member, I believe it said that, well, yeah, uh, you can purchase ships individually at the Eagle Moss shop. And if you wanted to sign up for the actual subscription, it's like, well, there's a subscription for a starship. I mean, this is awesome. You can go to herocollector.com slash star dash trek dash starfleet. Do they Time have for- the proto store? Not yet. Okay. Time for me to clear off more shelf space in, in the ready room. I mean, they've got a beautiful <laughs> Enterprise D that looks like they've got the uh, La Siana. Sur- 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 the Cerritos? The Cerritos. The, 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 <laughs> uh, Rios' ship. The Siren ship. Uh, Sir- Serana, right? Yeah. That's it. They got that one. They've got the Defiant. They've got uh, Voyager. They got the Enterprise. Hey. Enterprise. They've got Discovery. Yes. Yeah, so this is awesome. They've got all kinds. They've got Booker's ship. We wow. need them all. That's really cool. This, this is really cool. So if you've got the uh, means, head up uh, to HeroCollector.com and find the Star Trek stuff. Like I said, time to clean off the shelf in the ready got, room. Make some room. They've got the Section 31 ship. What? Wow. Yeah. It's all Dang. blacked out. Oh. Oh my God. Holy we we can't even get the section 31. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You can get a model of it though. Do they have the Titan? I, I, I'm just scrolling these pictures. I don't see the Titan in here. Oh, darn. Okay. Well, I know Patrick's going to get the D. He always gets the D. Oh, oh. Not right now. <laughs> he, get, he get the D later. And they, they might even get a Starship model. Maybe. <laughs> That's going to be friggin' awesome. Um, you have any other news for us there, Chief? That's all for me. Okay. Um, I have a little bit of, of news then. Sonequa Martin-Green was on The View. That's cool. Because Whoopi and, was also there that day. Yes. So cool. And then she told Whoopi, it, I thought it was really awesome. She says, I am your accomplishment. And the look on Whoopi's face Oh man, it was like pure sunshine and rainbows. I don't, I don't think she was expecting that. That's no, that's really cool. I mean, it's it's really the pay it forward kind of thing because for Whoopi, it was Nichelle, right? Yeah. And then for Sonequa, it was Whoopi. Well, because Sonequa was saying that you know, being the first black woman to you know be a captain on a, on a Starfleet vessel, that she realized at some point that it wasn't her accomplishment um, on her own that she stood on the shoulders of yes. of Whoopi and Nichelle. And so that's where that came from that, you know, she would be, that Whoopi it's, was a, her accomplishment. it's a legacy and yeah. both of those women are directly related and involved to it. I think it's beautiful. Uh, however, I have to give a correction. Well, it's a minor correction at that. It's not to take anything away from Sonequa and what she's done and how she broke that barrier. But actually there was a black female captain in Star Trek before then. Yeah. I, oh, I can't remember her name though. Um, do you remember? And do you remember the show? I mean, what, what episode it was? What movie? It was actually in a movie. Was it Star Trek Five? I think it might have been the motion picture. Oh, the beginning, the first one. Okay. Yeah, when they when the thing was coming down, V'ger was like scanning stuff and taking it. She was in a ship that she was a captain of a vessel that saw it and gave the distress and let people know. Interesting. Yeah, I mean the the, the first woman uh, statistics on Star Trek. You could spin that multiple ways because everyone thinks Janeway is the first official captain. No, nope. Um, nope. <laughs> it was Rachel Garrett, it, and there was also one in the Next Generation episode where they where Tasha Yar came back and they were in that weird universe. Yep, that was Rachel Garrett. She was captain of the Enterprise. Yeah, there you go. And uh, she didn't last very long, unfortunately, but she made a, a definite uh, contribution. So it's it's interesting. I guess what it is is that you can turn around and say that it's a first for series um i don't know if necessarily just make an appearance in a movie whether or not they count that because it's like a one-off it's all good either way the more involvement the better i i think the way she said it was that she was the first female black woman to captain a series i don't think she was just saying you know in general i think she was being more specific about it but either way i mean you look at the caliber of both of those actresses i mean sonique was standing on her own right now and 
doing a wonderful job. Oh, and, she's and amazing. Whoopi, she is. Whoopi, I love her as the captain. And Whoopi was always wonderful and will probably still be wonderful if we oh, catch yeah. her again in the, in the next Picard. Please come back. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's marvelous. She's doing and she's doing growth and you see her wrestling with mm-hmm. her position and what it represents. And you can see she takes it very seriously how she's a role model. Yeah. And I get it. She is a first black female captain because if you look at it, those one offs I told you about, those are blips that you can go to any person unless they're a diehard fan. They would have no idea. Yeah. Sonequa is not a blip. No, she is. <laughs> She's not. She is a big no. motherfucking ping. No, she, she, yeah, she definitely made a hit on the timeline. People don't usually remember one off characters. That's why they don't remember much yeah. of Rachel. The Trekkies Garrett. remember. The Trekkies remember. But uh, exactly. the average person are like, oh, Sonequa is doing that. She was on that zombie show. Now she's on Star Trek. That's awesome. Yeah. Ask how many people do they know who Captain Robert April was? See, crickets. Who? April. Captain <laughs> April. Is it, isn't that the, um, uh, uh, the month after March? No, not that <laughs> okay. one. I, okay. I, I think that's the one with uh, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. No, that, that's the reporter. That's the reporter, oh, April. Oh. But oh. see, a lot of people don't know that in the very first episode when Christopher Pike was on the Enterprise, he stated that he had just relieved Captain Robert April of command to take over the Enterprise. So he technically was the very, very first captain in the Enterprise, but it was only a, a one throwaway line that nobody hardly remembers. My Trekkie brain is smoking right now. <laughs> See, that's why you got to be somebody like me. I'm going to live forever because how can you kill that that has no life? <laughs> <laughs> I know all of this because of that. Well, we we went down on this episode. I'm sure other people may not have find it. As I didn't go down on any episode. I, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty kinky, sir. Going down on an episode. Uh, so that's what's happened to your throat. Okay. Especially this early into the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, now since we went well, down, it's, it's already half whole... an hour in the podcast, and we haven't even gotten to this freaking <laughs> episode. Yet. I know, and if if what will probably happen if Chief gets like tired of hearing our voices, he'll cut it all out, and none of this will ever exist. Now, this is a part where everybody loves to hear our science officer give the recap, and this time she's <laughs> going to do the recap as a favor because normally. It would have been number one, except he screamed out death chance. And now I can barely talk. So yeah. thank you, Heather. Thank, You're welcome. Thank you, Heather. No problem. <laughs> so this week's episode, and by the way, thank you, Captain, for that very, very lovely introduction. This week's episode is Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 3, Choose to Live. It first aired December 2nd, 2021. Teaser, Dilithium Heist. An unidentified Starfleet vessel is giving away dilithium to a planet when an unfortunately successful dilithium heist occurs by space ninjas, resulting in a Starfleet officer's death. Back at Starfleet headquarters, the bigwigs are having a meeting about this. This is the fourth dilithium theft this week. That's why they had a tracker on this one. They've identified the thief as a Kuat Malat nun named Javini, and thanks to the tracker, they know where she is. Now for the politics of the mission. Javini needs to be detained and sent to trial. Navarre requests a Kuat Malat representative to join in the mission, specifically Michael's mom, Gabrielle, and she wants to find Javini alone, but Starfleet wants Navarre in the Federation, so they compromise. Michael and Discovery will team up with Gabrielle and another Kuat Malat in order to find this fugitive together. That's why you do the recap, because if I did the recap, I probably would have called her Kumquat. <laughs> Kumquat. <laughs> Rather than Kwa. We, J- we J- know. J- know your pet names I'm for like- them. And I Javinci. like Kumquat. <laughs> Javinci. Javinci. I would have said something like, Javini. you know, Kumquat Milana or something like that. So, Milan, anybody that knows me. Well, that's better I, than I, Kumquat Melania. That's, that's so, a Disney film, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Now, however, I did like the beginning of it because that guy who he was holding his own for the longest, he had to come from, I think, oh. a IG planet because yeah. he was like he, knocking them back he and was, forth like crazy. The reaction time on him was so fast yeah it like was security breach boom he's in combat mode like fast <laughs> are you talking about patrick frigate the guy that got killed the, the red shirt yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Frigate. The red he, shirt. Was red, he was he? a red shirt he, he, he was a, was a first officer was it <laughs> 
He was, the, yeah, first officer Patrick, Patrick Fickett. Yeah, the USS Credence was the name of the ship. And the ship looked really cool. I was like, oh, it's a cool he, ship right here. Jesus Christ, though. If you have dilithium with a tracker on it and you, what the hell is that Starfleet officer doing willing to fight to the death if you have a tracker on the freaking dilithium? Back the fuck away, dude, he and was say, here you go. Principal. He was here standing his fucking ground, man. He's like, no, yeah. you got to wait death. your turn. Wait your turn. You ain't getting his dilithium. And, uh, and she says, step aside and he's like uh, and that ain't gonna happen i'm like that, dude was brave i'll give him that dude the admiral's on the side being like what the fuck are you doing dude let them have the tracker we need <laughs> no. a track I, I wonder if he knew there was a tracker <laughs> no i was waiting for him to do something like in the movie friday when he knocked the other one into the wall and went down i wanted him to stand over oh huh, you got knocked the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, he really, kept getting back up too they knocked yeah. him down and he came back up and he's like yep. he's gonna go for the sword and she's telling him choose to live. I mean, you yeah. didn't get the memo on these people. If they say choose to live, you should hold no. up. And wait a second. He, he was yeah. thinking, I'm, I choose to beat your ass. <laughs> sure, well, my ship, do that. You and know? the admiral is like, you know, oh, this is the first time we had a death. None of the other ones had a death. Yeah, because all the other ones are like, here you go. Yeah, we don't he, fucking care. They chose to live. Yeah, <laughs> we chose to live. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, you, you know Hence what? The title of the episode. Yeah. You know what? Though the, um, the whole thing about this scene that got me was how quickly they beamed it out like how come they didn't they needed to beam aboard at all why did they just beam it out and it just take off i mean I why did seriously. they have to beam aboard yeah. for that they should have just was, boom, blinked it out and taken away i was wondering about the intruder alert security should have been and they shouldn't have to run anymore with security and i thought security was a little slow reacting too yeah, i was waiting for his backup they, thank you they should have popped right there where they didn't show up at all where the hell were no, they no exactly they were on a coffee break well they're probably sitting there <laughs> they, you know they had drank heather's coffee <laughs> they said they go you hey. know the first officer he kicks some major ass so if he needs help he'll let don't, us know don't worry about don't, it don't patrick's laugh. on duty <laughs> don't laugh you'll choke <laughs> oh my goodness but that was that was really some now is this the next section or not they talked about his relationship which i thought was a nice way to standardize everything whose relationship With, who's yeah whose relationship the guy that got the guy that got killed no they didn't talk about him until the very almost the very end they yeah. talked about how he had a family. Yeah, yeah they did. At the end. end. Yes. Oh, okay, so yeah, they did mention mind. that at the end. It was kind of yeah. a sour note at the end. The like, what, what, what all the what kicked this all off for Starfleet? Because at that point, Starfleet's like, yeah, you know. But when somebody died, they really started to pay attention. Mm. It, yeah, well, that was the whole thing, and I agree with with what you're saying. There's a tracker on it, just like. Go ahead, run. I have an air tag. Mm -hmm. If they hadn't beamed aboard and then and end up killing Patrick Fickett, the, the urgency to catch her wouldn't have been as great, I think. I have to agree. So yeah. that so we wouldn't have had the Kawatma lot show up. We wouldn't have had them working with Navarre. And, you know, so I think that was it was a necessary point in the plot. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say that. And then we have the also the subplot is with Stamets. It's like, I get a chance to talk to Vulcan scientists. <laughs> he was really <laughs> excited about that. This is going to be, <laughs> but never meet your heroes. Yeah, <laughs> so never. That was pretty wild. And to see them all show up, it's definitely going to be happening. And they decide, you know, Michael, you want to go with your mom on this on this outing? That was cool to see her again. I, I really yeah, enjoy that actress. Um, she is on the good. show. Oh, she's great. And I love her character, yeah. especially now that she's cool a lot. I mean, I love that mysteriousness to her that that, that brings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. And she's just a badass, too. She she's, is. She was a badass. I, I can't mean, wait to get the oh. only male quap my lot next, next on Picard next season to see what he's doing. <laughs> Evan Evagoria. Also, it's an interesting role what Michael took on here at the very beginning of season one, episode one. Michael starts off as a prisoner, and now here she is as the jailer. Mm. Mm. She's sunning someone down to jail them. Yes, that is interesting. Yeah. That is Talk about, you know, character development. Yeah. And, well, I was also um, triggering off the first episode where she met the president and she's like, I don't like politicians. And here she is in this scene being forced into a political situation directly by the president. And it's yeah. actually got ramifications for the future of Starfleet. She's got to do this. I, I really like that they're showing that. They're showing the different aspects of being a captain other than, you know, captaining the ship. And as a person who is first starting off, you know, we have our ideas, we have our idealisms, we have, you know, us making mistakes. And I like how they're showing that 
they're showing the uh, progress Michael's going through the the journey. They also what I appreciate is they show again how politics can take a front seat to a lot of things. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, if you're yeah. on guard duty in a foreign country and somebody's attempting to ram through the gate, you're not allowed to shoot unless you are given the order weapons free because they don't want a political incident because of the political side yeah right so you're sitting there it's like oh my god this guy's got i have a weapon i can shoot and kill them nope can't do it not till you get the order but god, what are you talking about well somebody's on the phone just wait <laughs> it's <laughs> like what the hell i hope so oh they moved their car god. out of the way of the gate because they're crashing through it <laughs> yeah they they had to stop they one of the things that they had to change up a little bit. Back in 85, 86, I was in a naval, on a naval base, um, learning some, what they call Tempest security. And they had Marines as guardians of the, on the naval base because the aircraft carrier was in. Admiral's wife did not have our ID in it. And they told her to stop to verify. She decided she didn't want to stop. And he's like, you need to stop. You can't go through the gate until we verify. And she and was like, her. no, no, no you're, not allowed, you're not allowed to shoot the animal's wife. No, she, she basically said, screw you and gun the car to get through the gate. The you're technically guy, not even allowed to do a flyby over the animal's mm-hmm. daughter. So you can't mess with the animal's wife either. Well, the, the Marine on duty really didn't take that into consideration because he pulled his firearm out and killed the engine. Oh. Oh, oh, the engine's killable, but you yeah. can't kill oh, a person. Okay. Oh, he killed the engine. He he pumped like four into the engine block. <laughs> yeah, so, that, that'll take care of an engine. Yeah. And two weeks later, Marines were no longer allowed to be guard duties on, on the, <laughs> front of the gate. And they said, we're just, we're just too high strung. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Like, <laughs> too high strung. Yeah. They, they told us, I don't know if it's still the case, but when what, I was there. Whatever they were happened told, to that guy that shot the engine? <laughs> no, I don't know. Never hear anything about it, but I, I know the repercussions <laughs> was that we weren't allowed to be more than two of us walking anywhere together. They said when three Marines are walking together, it freaks the Navy out. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Oh my God. All I see is a bunch of semen. You, know, <laughs> you don't want to get yeah, the Navy. He's too excited. He'll get scared. I got, in, I got in trouble on base because of that, because they were marching and I was laughing at them like Robert De Niro. It was just, it was just, I thought it was funny. Well, at any rate, what that sets a little background on that. Let's um, go next to act one. Yes, I agree. I captain going on to act one, too comfortable in comfort zone. Tilly has lunch with Saru and asks him life advice while spitting out her mac and cheese. She really hates cheese. She's been trying to get out of her comfort zone and try new things, and that's why she wanted to ask Saru if she could water his plants. Yes, but don't touch the swamp kelp while it's in bloom. Why? It's better if you don't know. Stamus has a new theory, a primordial wormhole, which he has nicknamed DMA or Dark Matter Anomaly for short. He is going to Navarre to share these findings with the Vulcans. Book requests to join him, which Stamus reluctantly agrees. And Gray's new body is being made and there is much joy and excitement. Woo! The procedure will start soon, and the doctor finally holograms in. He discussed the risks involved, including loss of soul, and gets consent from both parties. Because, hey, who needs a soul? <laughs> Michael gets sagely advice from Saru and brings Tilly with her on the mission. And on the car ride over there, we find out that Michael's mother, Gabrielle, knows Javini. The first time she came to the future, Javini was the person who nursed her back to health for more than a year. They arrive to the moon and Gabrielle lays a bombshell on them. No phasers, only swords. This was so much to unpack this act. It was a lot. Yeah. First oh, yeah. episode they, was like that. Yeah. But oh the mac God, and cheese, yeah. seriously though, that really yeah, freaked me out. Disturbingly <laughs> undelicious. Everybody loves mac and cheese. How can Tilly not like? Oh my I don't God. like mac and cheese. Oh man, mac and cheese is lovely. I don't and then, like of course, mac and cheese. When they talked about the, he gave the initials DMA, for some reason I just automatically thought of DMX. 
What do you really want with the wormhole? So <laughs> it's just, I, I had flashbacks to configuring PCs of yesteryear when oh it's a DMA. God. I'm like, oh no. Oh yeah, the AD, the AMD chips. Oh my well, no, the DMA, Audio. you know, and, and your COM ports. Oh, that's and, right. Oh man, the, all that, yeah. all that crap. Um, yeah. What I liked about this, and I really, again, this makes me love Doug Jones and how he plays Saru and how they do it so much. She confides in him Tilly what the issue is. Mm -hmm. She feels she needs to do things. And Saru broaches the subject to Michael without throwing Tilly under the bus. Yeah. He doesn't let anything know about what Tilly told him in confidence. And he just goes off there and he makes the situation happen to get her out of her comfort zone. I thought that was so beautifully done as a, as a yeah. leader was, was really good. Oh I yeah. Pro a big props to Saru. Totally. I thought the, uh, the subject of feeling like you're where you're supposed to be, that kind of rang true with me because mm -hmm. I've had moments. I mean, I'm sure everybody has this moment in your life where you're like, what the frig am I doing right now? What, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now? I don't feel like I'm, what am I supposed to be doing with myself right now? It yeah. kind of drives you a little goofy if you really start to get deep into it. And I'm sure yeah. everybody has this problem, but we don't it, talk about it. Especially random beds when you're on leave. Sure. Random beds. Okay. When you're on leave. Why am I here? Hard. <laughs> Who is this person I'm laying next to? Oh my God. Do Hard. I even remember their name? <laughs> Fap, fap, fap. No. What it's are like, you doing I, over I, there? <laughs> can I get up without waking them? What the oh, hell? Shit. What am I doing with myself? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is the fifth time tonight. Is something wrong with me? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> is this normal? Uh, it's like, wow. Deep probing questions. Oh, don't deep probe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that depends. You know, but it was really kind of interesting. And then again, Stamus is like going over different stuff and book still wants to be in it. Yeah, I, I like that book is still trying to, he, he's got to feel like he's doing something. He needs to help. Even though it's mm -hmm. the most awful thing that he's got to help with, it's like, he's got to do something. I, I feel that for him. I mean, it's just like, yeah, man, put me to, put me to work. I, I, he just doesn't want to be alone in his thoughts. Yeah. One of the worst things you can do when you're in a mental crisis is to sit in a room in the dark by yourself with nothing to do. That's why you need to like go out and get some exercise, you know, jog around the mm -hmm. ship or something. Cause or at least pet garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A cat will help. That's actually true. Cats help. Play, playing with your pussy is always good. <laughs> Is that what you do when you're depressed? You play with your pussy? Yeah. That's good. Okay. Yeah, you get the okay. laser light out and you make them jump across the road. It's so much fun. I just <laughs> usually sit in the galley. And then you turn off the gravity in your room and watch them float around. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what the fuck, man? Put the gravity back on. You've ever gotten that death look from a cat before? That's what happens you, when you do but, that. You get that death Patrick, look. But Patrick really yeah. fucks with them and he has hologram people show up to try to pet it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not and cool. They freak out because it doesn't have smell as we found out. <laughs> well, cats I, also cling to uh, doorways too. So when you uh, turn off the gravity, they tend to cling to the doorway and hiss at you like really angrily. And if the door tries to shut automatically while a cat's there, <laughs> that's, that's when you really hear some hissing <laughs> and growling. No, oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> I was yeah. tripping out because it realized when I was looking at the engineering section with, uh, with Book and, and with Stamets, they don't have a seat in that entire engine room. I mean, it's, it's all standing workstations. I, I know standing it's, desks. it's standing desks are cool, but at some point you want to move them back down and sit for a little bit. <laughs> oh, you know what? I never really noticed that, but you're right. When they, the inertial dampeners are gone, they don't even have a chair to hold on to. Their ass is flying back and forth like pinballs. They don't have seat belts because yeah. they don't have seats. No. Well, they have one seat in the uh, spore drive. I don't think so. I think they took that, and that seat, seat That seat has seat belts too. <laughs> Well, no, that's no, so no. They replaced it with gel, right? The gel's there now. Yeah, he's got the gels the, in it, but they got the hand so, gel. Yeah, but he still has the board that he like sort of you know like leans up against and sits on. Like he, they have a little button print in there for him to sit in. <laughs> so. Well, that's true. It's kind of like a standing lean back thingy. Yeah, it's a comfort thing. Yeah, that's the technical term for it. Lean back thingy. <laughs> it's just. 
what the hell? Okay, so mm-hmm. where are the tachyons? We need to find out where the tachyons are. And that's the problem. They get all of the things match except for the tachyons. Tachyon treasure hunt. Tachyons are really good at hiding in the dark. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are. They, he brought up a really good point. He's like, there's like four points to a, a primordial wormhole. You've got uh, your gravitational five. five. Did I, I miss five? Damn it. I uh, think it was five. I, four to five points. And it's, I've got gravitational distortions. I've got the shape of the well. I've got the changes directions. And and there's lots of dark matter. That's all I got written down. So I missed five. What was number five? It was a tachyon. It was tachyons. Oh, and we're missing the tachyons. God damn it. That's where they went. They went right off of my thing because I didn't write it down. <laughs> you can see it's bugging him tremendously because he can't figure it out. So he's really excited to go on his science field trip. He got a note signed from Colbert that he can leave. He's got a field trip. He's, <laughs> he's all ready to go on his field trip. They didn't pack him a box lunch, but he went with book. So. <laughs> And, and meanwhile, uh, Burnham had to borrow the book ship. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to bring it back all, waxed, though. I mean, but she cool. was she was on that ship for a number of years. So she knows it almost as well as book, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I, I would think that, too. And, but there still comes a moment. Can I borrow your car? Like, <sighs> 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 even though you're like my mate now. Nah, yeah, you can borrow it. OK, fine. No, don't, I don't hurt know. it. I don't think you're on the policy still. <laughs> Remember to fill did, it up with gas. Yeah, top it off. To wash. <laughs> well, did you guys realize that at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, there are a number of stars that circling a black hole? Yep. And the people who found it won the Nobel Prize for in physics in 2020. But they're also thinking that maybe a wormhole and not necessarily a black hole. And if it's a wormhole, oh. who knows where it, what other part of the universe is leading to? You, you're telling me that this tachyon yeah. thing might actually be a real life uh, situation that we're talking about? And wormholes, just like the prophets use. Whoa. They do use uh, scientists as consultants on Star Trek, don't they? Yeah, they oh, yeah, do. they do. One of the things that people tend to forget is that we are basically like the trailer park trash of the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah, we are. Because we're way out on an edge of a spiral. So our planet <laughs> and our system <laughs> we're, we're in the is back. relatively is new. <laughs> we're young compared to all the stars towards the center. We're in the rural section. So there's civilizations that are ancient that are probably way more technically advanced that maybe have ascended and everything else. And we're thinking we're king shit. Yeah. We're, you know, whenever I think about the fact that we are here on this planet and- that there's millions and billions of planets out there. Mm-hmm. It just, I, my mind just like is blown because it's like the, the fact that we're here itself is a miracle. Mm-hmm. And to think that we might be the only ones, you know, in the universe is complete and total hubris. I mean, there has to be other life out there. There just has to be. I mean, if yeah. we evolved, then they would have evolved too. But it's just like, it's so crazy to think that we're on this blue ball that's in space and we're alive. And you go to that and I'm like, yeah, I'm digging what you're saying. At the same time, we're sitting here worrying about things like paying taxes and uh, and making my credit card bills and like all mm-hmm. this bullshit that we deal with as humans. And it has nothing to do with any of that other stuff. When you're sitting here, you're a life form on a planet within a realm of time. Where are the other life forms at? Maybe we're alive at the same time. Maybe we're not. Maybe we're too far. Maybe we're maybe they're ignoring us. If it doesn't matter, does that mean you have to pay your credit card bill? You have does that mean I can skip my credit no, card bill? No, you can't skip. That's the mm-hmm. darn thing. You can't skip your dumb credit card. I yeah, hate the fucker. Sh- I can't shit. skip it. See, that's the thing is that we here worry about credit card bills and everything else. And my mind was blown when I found out that the spiders can solve puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. And we can't even we can't even freaking talk to them. I never left a puzzle them. out that long before. Well, you're, you're <laughs> when you when you can zip you know, up your pants without zipping up your wiener. You know, that's Ouch. because yeah, that it hurts. hits it hits the floor and I gotta roll it up. And sometimes <laughs> if I don't roll it up right, it does it. But it it's just amazing. We have dolphins that figure stuff out, yeah. whales. They have whales that freaking save sea lions from killer whales by letting them ride on their fin. Yeah. And it's just and we we can't talk to them. And they saved what's his name on on lower decks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes, they said, they said Rutherford, get in this pool with us. Yeah, get broad naked. shoulders. Yeah. Get into your broad shoulders and get into it. But you know, and there's a lot of intelligent life on this planet that we can't even talk to. So I can just imagine. However, if you ever want to see a show that actually tackles the communication issue, see The Arrival. Really oh, with, good um, movie with uh, Amy Adams. Yeah. I like the Charlie really Sheen good. one, though. She's, she's my ninth cousin, believe it or not. Oh, 
yeah, wow. I can believe it because science and computers. But yeah, yeah I, and really, I, I verified really good. that I went back through the g- genealogy and found out where our ninth relative is. So we are actually related. Cool. See, that's Whoa. pretty cool. <laughs> but I thought I was blown by see- the whole humans on planet thing. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So people see Patrick's cousin's movie, uh, The Arrival, <laughs> and you'll be able to see about how they tackle communication. And it was really good. Of course, they have the military there. We can't talk to them. Blow shit up. <laughs> just trying to right. figure a way yeah. to talk Nobody to them. Nobody ever shows the military going, you know what? I think I'm just going to hold fire right now. Yeah. They oh, never do yeah. that. What's up with that? No. No. So speaking of communication, Adair wasn't a very good translator. Oh my goodness. She, no, she says, wasn't. Yes, I said this, this and that. And Adair goes, yeah, he thinks you're cute. What? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, translate. Yeah. Well, they do the same thing with subtitles. If you know another language. Well, Adair was so excited about, the, you know, the fact that Gray is going to be incorporated. How long does it take to uh, go from the point where I translate what you're saying word for word to, uh, yeah. Yeah, he said that. But Gray had this beautiful, like, speech, and the words he used were so well, and it it really portrayed, like, how he was feeling. And then Adira's like, yeah, he's cool with it. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. It it was a little disturbing, wasn't it? He's told, yeah, he's like, yeah, we're all good. Or, yeah, I mean, it was just such a short, it wasn't even anywhere close to what Gray said. And I'm like, translate, translate. It's it's the classic problem of playing telephone, except for the link is just one one link and they can't even get that right. If if you sit and watch something like, you know, the train to Busan and you watch it in Korean and you have the subtitles, they'll go with this long diatribe in Korean and the bottom go, he said to look out. (laughs) No, he didn't. (laughs) I'm pretty sure he said something else. (laughs) You know, it doesn't take 30 seconds to say, look out. Yeah, really. I was touched by the uh, the idea that gray is at the point where he, he i mean they're saying you could be lost in doing this transfer and gray's like i'm lost without doing i gotta do it he's yeah. been in the in between place too long yeah that was that was powerful right there he, yeah <laughs> gray was really sick of adira translating for him he's like i want to speak yeah. for myself like, let me out of here please <laughs> like, i just want to say able, the right thing i just, just want to be able to slap you because you keep messing up <laughs> You know? And did you guys notice Tilly in that black leather outfit? Oh yeah. my oh, God, she oh, looked good. Oh, okay, so Dominatrix. the uniforms, the uniform thing again. You're talking about how yep. every damn episode now we're like it's getting a, a new, new uniform. uniform. Yep. Yep. The cosplayers are like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> now I gotta get another scream. one. I had only one week. I got the one week. I got it done in one week and you gave me another one. <laughs> and it's in vinyl. What the hell? You know how hard it is to sew that shit? <laughs> I, I thought it, they wanted it for their St. Andrew's Cross in their holiday. Ah, <laughs> oh. uh, hot. Hello. Now, I, the I thought thing- they kind of looked like Crichton from Red Dwarf. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they kind of did. Yeah. A cuter yeah, version, I mean, but yeah. Crichton from Red, Red Dwarf or Crichton from Farscape? No, from Red, Red Dwarf. Dwarf. Red Dwarf. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Without the square head. <laughs> <laughs> and every time they do that, you get people sitting back. They're smeg heads. So <laughs> exactly. That's what all the cosplayers said this time. They're smeg heads. <laughs> now, the thing I have to go with, Michael, if I'm going on a way mission and I got some badass ninjas and I'm coming over, I want my phaser. You damn right. I want my phaser. Yes. Yes. You know? What do you mean? You can't use a phaser. I'm like, you're going to give me a sword. How many Starfleet officers are trained to use swords? Like and other than Sulu. And I mean, he was in on there. And I thought <laughs> Tilly did a fantastic job. She got knocked around of it but she did a fantastic job and with her sword yeah. you know they have concealed phasers like you know they have <laughs> you know arm straps or something where they can conceal that shit. and they didn't even go down to the planet yet or the the asteroid they didn't beam down yet so why they should still have their phasers on them so at this point that you know you, you, next you, you jump on the ship and oh that was oh my god next section Dang it, i blew it sorry <laughs> So when Michael gets sagely advice from Saru and like brings Tilly on the mission. So does that mean that the captain and number one are both on this mission and the discovery doesn't have anyone running it? No, they made Saru number one again in the last episode. So yeah, Saru's he's, number he's, one. He, he's number one again. Do you know what the swords that they gave um, Tilly and Burnham were called? What? Tan Kalana. Oh. What was you say? A Tan Kalotic? All I know is is, is 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 Tilly moisturized her hands so she couldn't hold on to it. That, <laughs> that made so me funny. laugh. That's like the typical nerd thing. You get somebody yes. who like is always here. Here's a sword. Oh, that's really clang, clang, clang. <laughs> like, yes. Oh, oops. Or a lightsaber. You just cut right through the floor. I've right. got to try swinging this around. Oops. 
It, it just like in, in you can't somebody here's the gun. It won't mm. fire. Oh jeez, <sighs> don't look down the barrel. It's like dude, safety. What? I'm being <laughs> safe. No <laughs> safety on the, the that little switch. <laughs> to the safe, yeah. You know, so it, it it was pretty cool. The shot where they pulled up to the planet at the end of that. That was pretty. They they came in fast. Yeah, they did. <laughs> that was impressive stopping. Yeah. They get good air brakes. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, it looked really cool. I'm not saying it doesn't look cool, yeah. but I thought it was kind of quick. Well, good thing they have inertial dampeners. Can you imagine yeah. in real life? Oh, you man. have a flat forehead <laughs> stopping that the, quick. The thing about Discovery yeah, compared to all other Star Treks is they get there quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. That modern day Trek gets you there quick. You imagine the hater rate on other ships? How long is it going to take us to get there? Well, at maximum warp eight, we should be there in three months. <laughs> oh, where's Discovery? <laughs> bleak, bleak. They're there already. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <God's> <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to get reassigned to that ship. Seriously. But they get bounced all over the galaxy. They're like everywhere, man. They get around. Yeah, all the time. And of course, it has like Ghostbusters giggle sound effects when it goes. Dude, black the alert. sound effects for that. Oh my God. <laughs> that that, they're so still funny. doing that. They are hilarious. I'm trying not to laugh, but they're so fucking <laughs> cute. I can't not laugh. It does. It sounds every, like every it, time they blink in someplace, it goes. They're yeah, just, oh God, guys, you, you, your sound effects. You, I think they were <laughs> one too many on that one sound effect. Yeah, it, it really does. It sounds like somebody took a squeeze toy and like longed it out. <laughs> I mean, if they want me to giggle every time they do a, a black alert, that's fine. But jeez. <laughs> Heather, next section. Hi, Captain. Act two, bringing a phaser to a sword fight. Storyline A, Michael finds Javini using their trackers and scans She's inside the moon and Javini knows they're there because her henchmen teleport in and start fighting. Michael is silently wishing she brought a phaser to a sword fight. One red shirt dies, but the rest survive. They beam down into the middle of the moon and it looks like a crypt with grave robbers. They find a dead alien of unknown species under Javini's cloak, adding another clue to this mystery. The moon starts to move and they realize it's a ship, they quickly continue their quest to find the dilithium. As Tilly powers down the ship, Michael and Gabriel figure out that the alien species could no longer live on their planet and they had to leave via this ship in cryostasis. The species in the cocoons are alive. They found her cause. She's trying to keep an entire species alive while protecting them from grave robbers and the DMA. This ship is power down. So what's next? Using Tilly as bait, of course. When Javini arrives, Tilly 100% chooses to live. Michael and Gabriel rush in and Gabriel and Javini start a badass sword fight. Javini, I feel like I'm saying vajayj. <laughs> Javini wins, holding Michael's mom hostage with a sword to her throat. Storyline B, Stamus is trying to work with a Vulcan scientist, but it's nap time and they're sleeping. I mean, meditating. So yeah, he's going to have to wait. Storyline C, Gray's procedure was a success, but he's in a coma and needs Adira's love and guidance to help him wake up. A distressed Adira barely leaves Gray's side, always talking with him and holding him, trying to guide him back into the real world little bit a trivia for you which i thought was really interesting on on this they had the moon which basically had an engine and they were moving the moon yeah um in the aborigines in australia they have a language uh, stories that they pass down they use oral history and they talk about how there was a time when the earth didn't have a moon and the moon showed up one day next we have scientists that were experimenting with the moon took a ship a, a capsule and they flew it into the moon at full speed and crashed it and the moon rang like a bell for over an hour they surmised wow. that the inside of the moon could be very well hollow when they talked to nasa about it and it goes oh the moon isn't hollow it's got a lot of caverns which basically means it's hollow <laughs> so <laughs> there's That's a, no moon and then also when you put on top of it the moon is the only body in the solar system that is perfectly a way that it will give a full eclipse of the sun two it's the only planetary body that's locked where it's rotates but its face always faces the earth 
No other planetary body does that. Two, also, the moon is way too big to be a regular moon. You're it's telling just, us we got to go and find the control room and fire that sucker up and take some joyride. <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm not saying that all of what all of this is true, that it is. But those are all the evidence that point to the moon, maybe not really being a moon. Uh, that's interesting. So it is. It's very interesting if you look at all the data that's out there. Well, isn't it made of cheese? No, oh, that part is not true. Tilly does not <laughs> like <laughs> cheese. No, because Tilly wouldn't have went. Tilly would not have gone on that away mission. But I it's thought, just interesting that Star Trek did that. So Yeah, I thought moons were occupied by bunnies. Moon bunnies. Moon bunnies. <laughs> Cute. Well, it's true. I, you bunnies. know what I was reminded of that one Star Trek original series episode where I think it was an asteroid they came on to and there's a whole civilization of people living inside the thing. No yep. idea that it was a moving ship, an asteroid. They had no clue. And Kirk comes in and busts it out and says, here's what's going on. That's I was reminded about that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the name of the episode, the world is hollow and I have touched the sky. There you go. Yeah. So that's where they got the idea from. Except this one's a sleeper ship or it's sleeper moon. Yeah. They were all in stasis there. So there's a a lot of information you can look up on there about hollow moon theory and stuff. It's it's definitely interesting read. Uh, that use the moon as an escape pod from their world. Yeah, who knows? There's all kinds of theories that are out there, but we won't get into that on this show. But it was really cool. And poor Tilly, they're using her as bait because she's lactose intolerant. I think that's <laughs> well, really that's funny. that's because Tilly trying to make them hug. Did you see their oh, faces? That was funny. She, they did, did not. They were it? not. She's like, you guys no. just need to hug. Both of their faces. If you look at both of their faces, they're like, fuck that shit. <laughs> and she's like, I hated my mom, but if she was here, we would hug it out. And they're like, <laughs> this bitch just said that we need a hug. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know our family? <laughs> like neither of them moved to hug. They're just staring at her like. Uh, they they no. already got their hug in though at the la- like the first act of the show when they yeah. met after the meeting they got the hug. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it felt like they were um, arguing to Tilly, but actually they were just talking stuff out. That's if from Tilly's point of view. Maybe it felt like there was some stress and some uh, some arguing going on, but they're just talking the reasoning things out. I felt bad for Stamets, you know, at the Vulcan Science Institute. I know. So did you know, I. He, he was so sure that this is a primordial wormhole or black hole. And they're like, they're, no, there was no superluminal, you know, radiation. Oh, I, I was just worried about him waiting on me. They put him on hold. <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's time to meditate while they, t- while they took a nap. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're taking <laughs> a nap. He has no cooth. You go in a Vulcan place, you know, and it's like they're going to help you. And they sit and you see go into meditation. He's like, "Hello, is it nap time? <laughs> you going to help me? <laughs> Hello, Hello what's going like, on wow. here? Wow. <laughs> like, can we use our brains? <laughs> I'm surprised that the the president didn't offer him a warm red spice. <laughs> Yeah, really. I mean, book got offered one. That sounded good. I was like, yeah. I, I'd like to get one too, please. Yeah. You know, but it was, it was kind of cool. And she's like, no, that's what they do. They go into deep meditation and they try and It's like, okay, that I can see that. That's pretty cool. You know, most people will go to sleep and they'll wake up and they'll have a solution to a problem. And it's kind of sleeping is a deep meditation, but they can go into it at will. <laughs> I just think it's interesting that the, uh, like four or five, the smartest science Vulcans on the planet decided to just, OK, we're just called take a nap at one time and then come up. <laughs> I, I know that, that was Stamets funny. Is like, what the fuck is going on with these people? <laughs> yeah. That was funny. It's like, I don't even have my phone. I can't even play a game while I wait. <laughs> I would have at least they're playing a little Tetris or something. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Space invaders. Yeah, really? Mm-hmm. You know, and then the the Vulcan president picked up on book. Well, she read him easy. like a, she, oh, oh, wait a minute. She read him like a book. Yep. <laughs> she did. She did. She's like, you know, you got issues, you got pain, you got guilt, you got to let go of it. You got to do it. It's like, well, teach me some of that meditation stuff you got going on. Takes a lifetime. Can't do it. I actually really enjoyed this scene between the two of them. I uh, agree. The, the Vulcan thing going back and forth and you know i i can see where you're having your problems and book is just standing there hurting going like what and I'm really and liking tarina more and more every she's time great she's on the show mm-hmm. she is great i love she is a really good vulcan and i love what she's doing i think it was a really good job i agree because she's vulcan but yet you really feel the emotional undertones and the caring and the empathy under it yeah even mm-hmm. though they don't show the emotions mm-hmm. they do have them mm-hmm I think the it was pretty you say. cool. <laughs> um, you, know, but- you know what was difficult was to ride two veil beasts with one set of buttocks. 
Try three. That, that was cool. That was funny. I like <laughs> that, that. That was a funny scene. And neat seeing Adira throw some darts. I was like, I wasn't expecting darts in Discovery. You know, she really liked Book because she offered them red spice and not old spice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would have been racist. For old spice? But the guy in the commercials, the yeah, same. Don't uh, you remember the commercials? Oh, I wasn't thinking about him. The old spice commercials. Yeah, his <laughs> name is Mustafa something. But when she was throwing the darts, did you notice they have like a really nice bar? Like, oh, wow. Is really, that 10 really forward? Nice bar. I like all the flame in the mm-hmm. background. There's some flame pushed into this episode. They had some in sick bay where uh, Gray was getting rebuilt. There's some flamers in the background? Yeah, <laughs> there's some hot flame pits going on. Um, I ex- I don't know how you explain flame pits. Like Las Vegas? Explain it like Las Vegas, because Las Vegas has a lot of those like, they do. firewalls. <laughs> the, the fake firewalls? Yeah. The fake yeah. firewalls, Because there's yeah. nobody exactly. sitting there putting new logs in there. That's actually just a you know a gas appliance. Is that anything like a sugar wall? Sugar wall. <laughs> I think they have let's, just, fire pit. let's just hope you can't see through it into like one of the rooms no and if you really well, want to fire pit, good but yeah um <laughs> use use an electric shaver on your underarms oh that will give you a fire pits oh yeah okay yeah oh. That, that, I, I, I say this because um, my ex-wife many moons ago oh. did one thing that made me laugh so hard. And it's my only fond memory of, of being with that thing is the fact that she one day decided to use my electric shaver and shave her underarms with it. <laughs> oh, Ew. so this wasn't something that happened to you personally. It was something no. that happened to her. Okay. No. I Ew. really thought that I was going to have to go to the hospital. <laughs> She was like the little kid in Christmas story. I can't put my arms down. <laughs> Ow. Okay. I can't put my arms down. I was like, what the hell possessed you to use oh. an electric shaver? So, yeah. You should have so told you used them on your nuts earlier. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to do it down there either. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I wouldn't put anything moving that fast down there. No, oh you got to get the lady razors for that. Yeah. Um, so I've heard. Oh, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I can imagine her replying, yeah, well, I trimmed my bush with it. Then that would have been, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Then you have the shaving wars. Yeah, she's not an arborist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. There was a lot of nice little lines in it other than, you know, you need more than one butt to ride a couple of horses. But when Book, Book was like wanting to know the meditation. And she's like, it's not going to last for you. Do you remember the phrase he said there, Pat? Uh, A a drowning man only needs one breath. Mm. That I thought was really. Yeah. Uh, was, that was deep. Yeah, it, very deep. It, and that, that's the reason I like the scene. That was a deep scene I, I, between those two characters and, and talking stuff out like that. And with the Vulcan, that was classically Vulcan. I just, I was, my Star Trek thing was going, you know? Yeah. She was like, how can you feel guilty over an act of nature, which you had no control over? There's no reason for you to feel guilty, you know? Yeah, but he still did. I really like the way they're taking Book's journey. I like mm-hmm. uh, I like what they're doing with this. He's a it's, he's a really nice guy. Oh, he's amazing! But you know. to see his character go through tragedy and then to try to come out of it and evolve and become better, it's it's very interesting. It it well, was. like Tarina said, emotion is essential to Quajons as you know, yeah. air and water. So for him, he has to work through the emotions because that's a core of. of of who he is. I mean, so it makes sense that he would eventually get through it um, probably quicker than a human would, I would imagine. Yeah, because he's by nature an empath. And so yeah. he to feel all of that and to go through, it's just, yeah, I, I can't even, yeah, the, the pain he feels and being trapped and what oh, he yeah. felt that he could do or what he could have done, you know, what it could have, should have is just, yeah, that was a really powerful scene. And then, and then we then have you, Adira sitting there holding Gray's hand. Yeah, them are really holding on tight and thinking that this is my whole world. I can't lose it, you know? Yeah. And it's I, quite, I mean, it, it's really novel. It's like, oh, we'll just put them in a synth. Like, it's like, oh, wait a minute. There's a lot of things you gotta, steps you gotta pass to make this actually successful. And they're, they're like convincing, like, yeah, no, we can do this. But you gotta think, well, gosh, you're moving your consciousness out of a human and you're gonna put it into a synth that how's a synth? Nobody's ever done this with a synth before right and and the, the whole well, well the consciousness connect with it. it's just like such a crazy crazy it thing is, it is. Picard, yeah. well, even even grace couldn't pass through aoa and she didn't make it until her into her synth where meanwhile jake schooley could do it don't oh, you are not i'm gonna knock you out <laughs> don't tell me pat seely what they got that <laughs> aoa jake schooley come on you guys dr grace 
Oh my God. Yeah, no. Avatar. Oh, oh. see, I, I only watched the first movie. There was only so, one movie. There's only oh, one. there yeah. is? <laughs> you're, you're not oh, talking yeah, about- in that case, I totally like, yeah, shh. <laughs> You're, you're talking about the one with the giant blue people, the James Cameron yes. movie? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh so my God. A- Awa, Awa my head is hurts. The, is, this, is the essence of life. It flows through everything. At the, y- y'all are Cameron. a bunch of nerds, man. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Says the man who spends hours working on a Star Trek podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I get it. I get it now. Okay. But no, it's it's the whole, you know, move, let's move your consciousness <laughs> thing. Um, I, I was in a discussion with somebody the other day. It was like, uh, you know, you, like you see that new Picard show and what was that about? And, and talking about synths and like, yeah, they, he's a synth now. And, and um, I didn't spoil it. He already knew that he was a synth, but, um, and spoiler alert, Picard's a synth. Spoilers. Um, but, you know, how does your consciousness physically become part of the computer brain? I mean, and we talk about, that's a thing. There's a, it's, they call it the singularity, right? Where we become one with machines. It's, it's that's like why, a scary, scary idea. You really that's wondered? why they have such a low success rate. And I does think your sense are actually human bodies, though. They're like reproducing human body that just doesn't have a consciousness in it. But there is electronics is involved. There's programming involved. It's just simulating a human. You really want to freak out? Think about what happens when we beam down. Where oh, does yeah. our consciousness go? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, yeah, what happens when you beam the synth down? Yeah, because we're basically disassembled and reassembled and Bones was freaked out the most about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th- th- that was all. Anyway, that's the whole synth thing. And it's amazing. All he has is his bones. It's amazing trying yeah. to stick uh, Gray into a, a synth. So that's a good question. How are they going to teleport Gray? Because isn't his soul, wouldn't it be harder to transport it? Originally, they had an issue trying to transport the trills in the first place. Yeah. The biofilters would have filtered the trill out. That's not healthy. Yeah, that, yeah, that was an issue back then. But now that they have it, if you you think about it, it's just well, all they just have to do is do a bio scan on Gray, and you got to make sure somebody is doing that scan because you got the one yo yo running the transporter that day, and he forgets to do the scan, and next thing you know, wait, where'd my trill go? <laughs> dude where's your trill where's my trill dude oh that would be freaky well, well i got a whole big discussion when it comes to transporter and buffers and everything like <laughs> we that. should so we, we should go to the next section that. sir you know, yeah. yeah i think are we done with it did we get to the oh, point well, one last Pretty act much. one and last act two. oh no we two, didn't get to the part where they started fighting act three there's there's one, one more act after that four, oh, four, four. four no we didn't get to the part where the tilly bait worked and the woman showed up yeah and, she showed up and uh yeah, they get a little sword fight and gabby's like uh uh-uh, uh, no, I got this. And she's like, you forget who's the teacher and who was the student. And and next thing you know, the scene ends with uh, the, the sword at the throat. Yeah. And 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 Burnham looking like, what am I going to do now? I wish I had that phaser. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Tilly's just like there going, I uh, don't want to fight you. I'm choosing to live. I'm moving away. <laughs> she's like, I don't I'm, want nothing to do with that. <laughs> I'm wearing black. You can't see me. okay next section hi captain act three mind meld addiction storyline a michael does some fancy hostage negotiations and convinces javini to let her mother go we listen to javini's story and learn she's made a connection with this telepathic race and is trying to save their species from extinction michael offers to help wake them up while tilly fixes the ship fulfilling Javini's oath to save the alien species. Javini agrees to this plan and they get to work. Being the overachievers that they are, they fix the problem in less than five minutes, waking all of the sleeping aliens and providing them a working ship to escape if needed. Javini surrenders and is put in handcuffs. Later on in the big wig's office, Javini is given over to Navarre via their extradition treaty. Michael is not happy about it, but she doesn't have a choice. They have to trust Navarre just as they have asked Navarre to trust them. Storyline B. After a long nap, the Vulcans have concluded that Stamus has no clue what he's talking about. The Vulcan ambassadors suggest another method, a mind meld of the memories of a survivor. Book agrees, even though they didn't find what they were looking for. They unlocked a loving memory instead that ended up giving Book peace. Even Michael noticed the change. Storyline C. 
Gray made it through. He's awake. He's alive. Yay! Lots of joyful crying and happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Yay! Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy. That was really kind of cool how Michael did Columbo and figured everything out with her mom being held <laughs> yeah. at, at throat point. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. impressive, actually. She's like, oh, wait, 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 hold on. We're not going to have that in your cause. We're going to help you. She was a master negotiator. Yeah, she was. Okay, let, let me think this. Okay, all right. You're protecting the grave robbers, right? See, see, see. And they have platinum in their blood, right? See, see, see. <laughs> and they were doing Latin, it. Platinum, not Latinum. 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 Oh, Columbo doesn't know the difference. I wonder if Fringes were like stealing <laughs> the bodies and stuff. Um, but. Right? <laughs> she pissed it all together. Meanwhile, Tilly is like, hey, I fucked this up pretty good, but I'm going to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, I did a number on this, but I'll, I'll get it. I got it. Don't, yeah, just hang on. You know, <laughs> and yet they, they turned around and did it. That was that was pretty cool. And I thought it was really up. cool. That sci fi part of it. The the aliens on the moon, inside the moon thing. Mm-hmm. I thought I'm just digging all that sci fi stuff. Yeah. Did you guys notice when they were fighting with Javini that, uh, where did her henchmen go? Like all of a sudden she's out of henchmen. Does that mean they killed like her last two henchmen? They killed them up on the ship. So when they beamed down, she was by herself. Yeah. So they, they killed all of her followers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so they here going. they are pissed off that she killed like one or two people and here they are killing like eight or 10 people. Yeah, it's kind of different. Oh, it's, OK. Yeah. When you're in the situation, it's kind of different. I see how I mean, you're, you're they were defending turn, themselves. They weren't they weren't attacking. I mean, life versus life. Turn your phaser to stun. They, they wanted to bring the phasers, but no. See, nobody had to get killed here. They could have had the phasers, but no. no we got to play like, the swords. Just like Jane said, I sure wish I had some grenades now. <laughs> <laughs> right. so yeah i i thought uh it was interesting that javini didn't see that uh, burnham was actually the daughter she's like she's my daughter trust her and she's like what she your daughter i had no idea yes apparently they weren't that close because she didn't know <laughs> i know right and the these aliens the abronians did i get that right yeah i think so. sometimes were, i wonder about my translations here they were bronies the bro yeah, that's what i thought they were bronies <laughs> the bro- i thought they the kind of looked a little bit like the aliens in voyager when they went warped 10 yeah. and they ended up on the well they weren't aliens they were Janeway in Paris oh my god oh, what they, happened looked, to Janeway? they looked like fat versions of Janeway in Paris mm-hmm. well, what happened if they're their they're descendants Ooh. I mean it was 3,000 years into the future right I Ooh. know 4,000 years what happened something if like that this, oh my, oh my god. god oh wouldn't my that be god. a trip oh wow <laughs> I think we're, we're onto looking, something we're looking at Jane and Paris as like great 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 grandchildren that's right they're the grand grand kitties oh my god the offspring oh ah. my goodness or they could be the abronians <laughs> what's <laughs> true what were they doing no, with all bro, that latinum in their biomatter yeah, but they were also voyagers right because they were on the moon <laughs> voyaging to another planet i mean come on it's it's really close right and we're not the only ones thinking this right i bet other trekkies were thinking this if you're thinking this if you thought about this put it in the comments so we know we're not alone yeah we're not crazy are we <laughs> please tell us well, we if, are, you're listening, if you're listening on soundcloud find us on youtube and put the comments in anyway because i don't think you can put comments on soundcloud and from oh, long you, i think you can actually i think you can okay, you put, it, put it in, in soundcloud then account but account. anyway if somebody yeah. had to get platinum so badly that they had to du- dig it out of sleeping aliens what yeah. the fuck it was a Ferengi. it was a Ferengi. that's some fucked up Ferengi, man yeah i think so they're the ones that love i mean it. it's it's like these copper thieves they just go get they'll rip it out of your friggin prius i mean what the hell uh, there's been i've saw some stuff on the um on the murphy awards where they had a guy who they was stealing copper and they went up on a power line and didn't realize that <gasps> it's a power line for a reason <laughs> oh. it you know there's all this copper we can get it's right yeah. there on the telephone pole oh yep. really and they cut it and they went to cut it and became crispy critters so <laughs> oh, jesus yeah and that's why it's called the murphy award the Dar- darwin awards right uh, thank you darwin the awards darwin thank you for words. correcting me I was darwin like, who's <laughs> Who's no, Murphy? Mur- Murphy's the detective in the um, the Dresden Files. Yeah, so but it's a Darwin Awards, and I think we talked about this before. If you ever have a little bit of time to waste, <laughs> look it up. There's a lot of it in there. Well, no one ever said criminals were smart. Nope, they never say that. <laughs> no, that's for certain. But it was it was pretty cool, and the fact that Tilly worked well under pressure, she got it back up. Michael was able to turn on. My- the Michael power. fixed their alarm clock. Their alarm clock yeah. was stuck on snooze. And there For was thousands an L. of years there. There was an L in that word alarm clock. 
Oh. Yes. <laughs> Burnham fixed their clock. <laughs> yep. Somebody had set it for one o'clock and somebody hit extra zeros before they. <laughs> yeah, there's like seven million down. zeros on there. Seven by million accident. zeros. Like the cat go. stood on the keyboard oh. on the zero key. A cat <laughs> would do that. <laughs> but that memory, I thought, was really cool where Book was able to turn around and see yeah. what he forgot. Yeah. And uh, loving, again, the Vulcan mind meld thing with, with Book. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a great use of the technique. Dude, and, they're and addicted to the mind meld. They, they don't just meld with every. I mean, maybe they do in the future. They just meld with everybody. But um, no, I, I thought this was a great use for it. And it was to help. It was to, you know, what you might call it, rehabilitate Book's memory. Mm -hmm. I thought that was beautiful. And he and that he got a beautiful, peaceful moment out of it. That know, was worth yeah. it. I know when I was trying to stop Heather from trying to cook all the, in the kitchen. So I tried it. I was in her room and I put my hand on her face. I'm like, my mind to your mind. And she woke up and goes, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of my cabin. <laughs> so it didn't work for me. So. No. Yeah, but you, you have to have a mind to initiate that with first. Which oh. is that an insult for you? Or for, is that an insult for me or for her? For Damn. you. Ooh, it goes both ways. Oh Ass. my God. You said we don't have minds? Well, if you don't mind, I don't matter. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I stutter? <laughs> oh, how rude. I don't know. Man, you've been so full of yourself since you won that Cleon contest. Oh my God. Well, it wasn't really a contest but just I'm to looking say for an airlock button <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was it was pretty cool and did we get to the section where they explain about the choose to live or is that the next that's section? coming up yeah the, the that's the, probably the, the next the, section right it's no no well, there is you guys, the next section you this guys was keep the last adding section. sections yeah, yeah we memory love... alpha there is okay you guys oh, section no, this off like crazy alpha had no freaking sections when i left and she, and she well, called it section three well, i'm pretty I, sure this is section four well, but i really enjoyed the fact when she explained what it means by choose to live it's like you're at a pathway you got it at a crossroad yeah the path but, ends yeah the path ends there's no further going so either you choose to die or you just abandon where you're trying to go and, and take off you hoser and it means to look inside yourself with absolute candor because at that hoser. point in time either you're going to choose to live or you're going to stand up for what you're trying to and you fall down because of it you're such a hoser yeah so i agree cool, 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 cool. They say it's an easy thing. It's either move to a new path and live, which means you basically let them get their way and you don't try to fight them or stay in the same path and you I, die. I mean, it's what do you really stand for? Do you really stand for what you believe in? If you do, well, sorry. But, and I, I respect that. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. If, if we don't there respect that, yeah. If we don't respect that you're going to stand for that, then, well, sorry, but uh, you didn't choose to live. So see ya. Well, thank you. Just like when I tried to take a half of a grilled cheese sandwich that Chief made, and he picked up his knife and looked at me and says, choose to live. <laughs> so That's right, man. You don't touch my fucking like, cheese sandwich. And so I was like, sorry. <laughs> put it back. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So that was pretty cool. But then they make it back, successful mission, and they're like, okay, I got the prisoner. She killed a Starfleet officer, you know, so what are you going to do? Huh, they're going to give him back to the to the, the, the kumquats. This is the bigger political issue. So Starfleet is playing politics and mm -hmm. they're saying, okay, we'll give them back. We're, we're going to hand, uh, give her back. It's your Kualat Malat. You can have her. She's, it's your responsibility. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all there is to yeah, it. Michael is upset. Michael's like, yeah, yeah, there's a guy, he has a name and he has two children. Um, and hello. a partner. And a partner. Yeah. Where's, don't, where's don't the, know whether that partner is male or female. Uh, it sounded male, but anyway, yeah, I, mean, it's, I would assume, but I don't, you know. Yeah, it's. It, they, I think it sounded male. When I went through the subtitles, it, it came across definitely as male to me. It, it's definitely, and this is where I, from being in the command position, understands both point of view. One, you want revenge. You got a Starfleet officer was killed over something that was really kind of senseless. Even though the logic was sound, she couldn't get the lithium because she's a person. Starfleet doesn't give the lithium to just people. They need an organization and she wasn't an organization. So she just had to go and steal it, even though they were giving it away for free. So I, I, I get that part of it. But also you have a very powerful organization that you would love to have on your side. So do you want to piss them off? No, not really. That's the whole political side of things. And uh, in the beginning of the episode, it was about saying, hey, Starfleet's not going to stand for this. So we're, we're going to take and get charge of, you know, we want to be a part of this mission to, to find this person and take care of her. And uh, at the end of the episode, Starfleet's, they're playing the politics side where, yeah, look, we, we did this together and we trust you're going to do the right thing with 
this person that we're releasing to you. Well, they do that all the time in the American justice system. If if you have something that they want more than they want you, they're willing to trade up. It's you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. They did the yep. same thing with Operation Paperclip. You know, um, World War II, you had all these Nazi scientists that made all these leaps and bounds that did horrendous things. And it's like, yeah, we still want the scientists, so we'll forgive you if you come and work for us. And we'll forgive you all the atrocities, atrocities that you've done. A lot of people do not realize a lot of our medical advances came from what the Germans did to the Jews in the concentration camps. Horrendous things in the name of science if you find out some of the stuff that they've done. Forcing a woman to try to get birth with her legs tied together to, to be able to to dissect what? the person okay, alive. You don't, you don't need to. Yeah, you can just stop. Yeah, just stop. That's, a lot that's of, okay. We don't need any more history, sir. Horrible, horrible stuff. But I'm just wow. saying, and they use that information and it furthered science. We still yeah, use they did, it. They did experiments on twins. And yeah. On yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. Everybody. So it's unfortunate, but the United, like you're right, the United States and all governments have been doing this for the greater good, so to speak. And that's what Starfleet did. Mm. It's like, yeah, one Starfleet officer is dead, but look, we have the potential of getting this group that can save millions of lives. Bringing the Vulcans back in is, is very important. Yep. I thought it was interesting that uh, Admiral Vance brought up the uh, metaphor of the orchestra. I love that. Having played in a band. um, So good. That was. I don't know if I entirely agree with the metaphor, but. I, I liked what well, it didn't because I played in bands and, and sometimes you do care what the woodwind section is doing to the other section. I mean, but, but, but yeah, so I, but I see what he was going. With. I love the way he brought with it the, out and tried with to the explain conductor. it. And of course, yep. he's like, well, you know, I get paid by the using the, the, the syllable or by whatever, the by the letter. <laughs> I kind of laughed yeah, but at he's it. Still, he's still in a good mood since he, he, you know, he has his wife and kids back. So yeah, he's, he's still, getting some still. So he, he's, not, he's not Admiral Grumpy Pants anymore. So, <laughs> which was pretty good. And Gray woke up. That was pretty cool. It's like, I heard you throw the eons in the ether and in the fuzzy darkness nowhere, calling me back, feeling your love as a beacon. So their you know. faces were just like, I mean, it was just, it was pure joy and it was, it was. It was so I, amazing. It was watch. very touching. I thought yeah. it was interesting watching Gray wake up and look at his hand and mm-hmm. was like, oh, I got two hands and I've got, oh, there's my chest right there. I can touch that. And if this was an 80s movie, he would have reached down to make sure, you know, his crotch was there, too. But <laughs> you know, they didn't do that. And I was wondering why they missed out on that very important part. Do you remember in Picard where they were talking about the synth and they said, like, he had no genitals? Does that mean Gray has no genitals? Oh, hell no. I, I think they, Gray's they, got genitals. It's like, they, they it's like a it. Ken doll. I, I think they make some of them without genitals. They they had to fix that part. But okay. what I was kind of scared about a little bit, because I know they've done this shit before, is that, you know, he wakes up and Adira looks, you know, says, oh my God, you're back. And smiles gently and goes, who are you? I was worried about it being a schizophrenic android. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> there's, there's how many lives within the span of a trill? Yeah, how many? Yeah. Door, how, I was like, close the door. How many crazy trills are going to be coming out? And like, I'm a synth now. I mean, what if they all came back to life and they were all fighting Ooh. for consciousness? Wait, but now this gray has a body back. Are they going to take the synth, the the trill out of Adira and put it back in? Well, that's where that came well, from. It came from the. It came from Adira. Because the trill was in Adira. They so they took did it transfer the trill. Yeah, they, they did. Tr- th- that part happened seamlessly in the beginning. Oh, I missed yeah. it. Yeah, they uh, said it was unjoined or whatever. I must have been fixing my Malibu black and rum. <laughs> when they when they said that um, Gray was unjoined, it meant his consciousness was unjoined from Adira. I think Adira still has the, um, the no, trill because you her. just don't transfer a consciousness. You've got to transfer the trill. They moved the trill into the synth, so the synth was built to take the trill. That makes sense. Take it. It's going to be interesting it. to to see. It's like, <laughs> take it. Whoa. Take, take it all. So maybe Gray has like multiple personality disorder and then the trills like past hosts like cycle through it, it, this. Gray and- looked normal. I mean, I, I, I oh, didn't think Gray God. looks normal. I think everything was fine. That's a We're story just projecting. Line. We're yeah. just projecting. Yeah. yeah. That would be a storyline later on. I was tripping out on this just from personal experience of waking up after uh, an operation or something like that. I didn't have an operation. I was had medical issues. But when I woke up and it's happened two times to me, I was not able to 
pull up my hands and look at them like Gray did. So I was restrained both times. And it's just like, I'm so jealous of the way Gray was able to wake up and stand up right away and get hugs and everything. And it, it didn't happen like that for me at all. They were scared of you because you built like a broad shouldered ox. They didn't I mean, want you waking up and thrashing the room and I knocking was, out the nurse. They, they restrained me because apparently at one point my arms were moving around. See, told you. <laughs> <laughs> but when I woke up, it was the most, the very first time this happened to me, it was weird. It was a, the most relaxing wake up I have ever had was waking up in the hospital room. It was very weird. Weird. You know, and you hear them all scream, he's moving. <laughs> Is he tied down? <laughs> It was weird coming out of um, anesthesia from having a colonoscopy. It was like just bizarre. Oh, I hear stories. All of a sudden you're just awake. Like they tell you things, like you've said things, like you have conversations with these people about all kinds of crazy shit. You have no recollection of what you were talking about at all. What did you tell them? It was funny because when I had the colonoscopy, I thought, you know, they're going to give me something to make me go to sleep. And it'll be like, you know, count backwards from 10, 10, 9, 8. And then when you hit one, you're asleep oh no it was like 10 boom yeah it's right away yeah that's what happened with my my father when he had heart surgery he, 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 he gave, fentanyl he gave him 10 and he was out and then he woke up like nothing it was a it was not groggy wake up or he was just awake hey right, yeah. you know it was very it's exactly. like wow and they had major open heart surgery on the guy i was like whoa crazy crazy yeah. stuff they, yes. someone had to give me fentanyl to get in my butt yeah <laughs> I ain't touching Dude, that one. I am not touching not that one. We're not talking about your like, you yeah. know, past experiences of raves <laughs> and everything. Um, they, they, we they should probably to. wrap this up. Um, yeah. The uh, other cool thing at the end of the show, book was looking up at the Quajon Forest in the hollow that was cool. in, in Burnham's. Uh, is that her quarters or is that like a captain's yeah, lounge? Yeah, well, I think they're living together. So, yeah, I mean, it was, they have a bed in there. So it was like, wow, this place is, you know, Shwanky. it was real cushy. Yeah. On on a scale of one to ten on this, what would you give it, Heather? I would give this a probably an eight. It was an good. Eight? It's not the best. I really liked it. I really like seeing their journeys and everything. It's just I'm I'm keeping two points clear so that way when it blows me out of the water, I can give it a nine and a ten. But this was still a really good episode. And how about you, Mr. Cleon, Death Screen winner? Yeah, I'm going to give it a, a, an eight, too. I, I liked the correlations between the different stories and um, finally getting to see Gray incorporate and be able to be in the world again. I'm going to have to. Uh, oh, how about you, Rocky? I was going to say, you're going to ask me? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm actually an eight, too. And it's not because I didn't like. So I liked this episode. I thought this was a very good Star Trek episode. I was enjoying all the little mini stories. I was enjoying, I mean, the politics kind of like eh, yeah the politics but i see what it was going i see the bigger picture of what's going on and it's interesting to watch that and see burnham go through that the vulcan stuff was great i loved that and i love the sci-fi you know crazy space aliens in the moon kind of thing i i, I just I was digging all that sci-fi. So I'm definitely, I'm, I'm, it's a strong episode um but yeah it's like heather said give it some room so at least eight totally eight well I'm going to have to also be on the same bus as you guys. I agree. I think an eight. The crazy train? On, on this one. If, yeah. if, if Tilly would have liked mm-hmm. the mac and cheese, it would have been an 8.5. <laughs> oh, that that would have made it a 10. <laughs> yes. I think this is the first time we all had the same number. I, I, I think you're right. It is. I think so. Yeah, we're all here. And on the 100th episode, too, it's Kismet. Ooh. <laughs> wow. So- why did you give it an eight, Captain? I gave it an eight because one, I enjoyed the dichotomy of the whole episode of the way they were going back and forth with with the way book was and the stress and finding peace. I like how Saru was able to help Tilly without divulging that he was helping Tilly. And that just makes her more confident to be able to go to him with problems. You know, so I thought that was really cool. I, I enjoyed that. However, I think that if it was me, I would have still hit a phaser, just like you said, Heather. And if she came out of nowhere and it's like, choose to live, I choose to stun. That's right. You know, <laughs> I got both. <laughs> I'll know? stun you and choose to live. Yeah, let's that? see you. Let's see you block that with the uh, sword. Let's see you wake Ooh. up in handcuffs. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if don't touch that kelpie and seaweed. You might get stunned too. I wondered what was going to happen with that kelpie and seaweed. There's I, probably not enough air filtration to get that smell because it is it like skunk weed or something oh. like that. Yeah. So, but it was a good episode. But I have a question for you, Pat. Um, since you have a little bit of voice left, what's next week's the title oh, for next week? Shoot, give me a second here. It is. Do we know? 
Yes, we do. It's um, the, the, the trailer that they showed a scene in uh, the ready room and it looks like a fun one. It's called all is possible. Ooh, nice name. Ooh, that is. I really enjoyed the ready room. That was really good. Oh yeah. Will Wheaton is uh give that guy a big hug. Yeah. yeah. He, Blue and Ian were just hysterical. They yeah. were just like giggly little teenagers. <laughs> it was fun. It was really fun to watch. It's going to be good. Now, also, I want to give a thanks to those of you that stopped by the table to see Patrick and I at the Comic-Con, even though we haven't gone yet, but this will air after the fact. So if you did stop by and see us, thank you very much. If you didn't, we're going to talk about you in the next episode. So there's that. <laughs> So, and depending on how, how I'm feeling will depend on how much of the time I'm there. You the might get a sexier, deeper voice. It, may, it might still be gravelly, but it might even be, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh la la. That could be exciting. Yeah, because yeah, he's not feeling after he yells. So he's going to be masked up. Do not ask him to show his legs or to give him a hug. He's, he's healing. So thank you, everybody, for being able to join us. Make sure you're safe out there. Um, there's a new uh, variation going out. There's the Omicron, which I think is hysterical because it seems like the only people that could pronounce it correctly are Star Trek fans because we're used <laughs> there was to a clip on Twitter pronouncing where it just all the different Omicron, pro- theta. <laughs> yeah, Omicron, yeah. Omicron, I'm like, Omicron uh, radiation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Decepticon. It's like, yeah, that's the first thing I thought. I was like, well, that's a Decepticon planet, right? I'm like, what? <laughs> So I think it's pretty hysterical, but yep. So thanks for joining us. Make sure you guys stay safe out there. Before we go, sir, I just wanted to say thank you guys for this podcast. It's a hundred episodes. And I mean, we're not all here when we started and some of us aren't here now, but it's been great doing this. And even though he's a little sick in the background, it's great having Patrick with us. Um, Heather is always wonderful. And and Nathan, I couldn't ask for a better captain of the show. And it's been great editing the show. (laughs) I can't get Shatner. If I could get Shatner to run the show, (laughs) that would be a totally different. uh, Yeah. But uh, yeah, but Nathan is the best captain. Nathan's not too shabby. Okay. (laughs) I just want to say that is great. To have all of you here today <laughs> on the show for what seems to be 100 episodes. And to have that's 007 the most, that's here. That's the worst Shatner impression ever. The Thank Dot you. doesn't like it's it. Shatner, sir. Bad. No, I, I just noticed that. Wait, Dot, what are you stroking? Oh. Don't, don't put grease on my floor. Oil, don't do that. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us again. We're going to get ready to get going. Um, what you're not going to see is that right after we end the podcast, we're going to join up in the ready room and enjoy champagne and a party to celebrate our 100th episode. So I'm going to look for that pulsar, but I'm not going to stare at it. So we got a rave light going on. So thank you, everybody. Woo-hoo. Please make sure that you not only have a great week, but make it so. Woohoo! Yeah, where's, where's that? Where's that champagne? You, you got it? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell Patrick not to wear the see-through shirt and pants. Thank you. All right. What do you mean Heather is wearing see-through stuff? <laughs> no, we're not going to put it on Patreon. Oh, great. The sensor saw her. She's walking through her see-through stuff. It's Wait. not that bad. <laughs> what do you mean that? What do you mean the chief just knocked over the wine glass with his member? <laughs> we're, we're still it's a members only party <laughs> wait are we are we still broadcasting oh my god cut the cut cut yeah. cut the power cut the light press the button and if you can support the show by going to patreon.com slash starfleet underground lots of perks to choose from and you might even like some of them starfleet underground beaming in to a podcast feed near you Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at starfleetundergee and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.